is good, everyone. This is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live label free. As you can see, we've got two guests tonight. So I'm very excited to let them share their story and introduce themselves. But first, a little bit about them. They are international best-selling authors, hosts of the Be Bold Branding Podcast, and partners in Brandface the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe. So I'm super excited to hear that story. They have helped and inspired authors, podcasters, coaches, real estate agents, and business owners in five countries and 43 U.S. states to stand out and become an authority in their market through the power of personal branding. Please welcome Tanya and Michael. Guys, I don't know who wants to go first, but can you introduce yourselves and tell the audience a little bit about your backgrounds? Sure, sure. Thank you for having us on, first off. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, well, I'll go first. So um, my humble beginnings uh, were selling vacuum cleaners door to door. And so I did that to pay my way through college. And that's really where I kind of got the first taste of personal branding because selling vacuum cleaners, you can't just go up to somebody's door and ask them to give you their wallet. You know, it's kind of like against the law for one thing. So I had to kind of make up the story about why I felt they should let me in. And so I did that and and I sold vacuums for about three years. And then I was discovered by somebody in the radio business. They said, you know, I think you'd be great at radio sales. Why don't you come on board? And so fast forward 18 years later, I was still in the media world. And that uh, then is where I finally got like where I really understood what what branding, personal branding could do for a business. Because as soon as I hit radio, I saw that there were these rock stars in my market and they were just regular business people. So I was trying to figure out what made them different. And it turns out almost all of them have one thing in common. They were the face and the voice of their own business in their advertising and marketing. So that positioned them as local authorities, local celebrities, if you will. And so I, I was intrigued by that and I began trying to create more of them. So I would go take the clients that I had and pull them into the studio and help them write and craft their own commercials. And, and over the next, you know, 18 years, I did that in a lot of, with a lot of clients uh, on television, radio, newspaper, internet, you name it, just helping them to become the face of their business. And um, then fast forward, you know, a few more years, I I opened up in, you know, a small, um, agency and served clients in the um, media world, the big three, radio, television, newspaper. I served them for a little while. And then I realized, okay, my real passion has always been helping people with personal branding to position themselves as the very best face of their business. So I began to write um, the first book in the series called Brand Face. And that was for business owners. And then I met this gentleman here and I will let Michael pick up from here and explain how we met. Yeah, I, uh, my life is a little bit different. I, I was an auctioneer by trade. That's my first passion. Uh, I focused on cars and equipment, but the guy that trained me to do that uh, said, get your real estate license and you can make a little extra money selling farms, things like yeah. that. Uh, being stationed in Atlanta or in the suburbs of Atlanta, we sold in Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, just sort of stayed regional like that, a little bit of Florida. Um, I got my real estate license and I thought, well, I'll just buy my own rental portfolio. I've always been a real estate investor, things like that. I helped my family and my friends buy and sell property. Uh, but that was about it. And then I would use it to sell these farm sales. Yeah. Uh, in 2000, I opened up my own firm, but it still was like a home-based firm. I didn't have an office. I didn't need an office. I just traveled around like, you know, being a contract auctioneer and selling real estate cars and equipment. And then in 2006, uh, right before the mortgage debacle hit, I was asked to broker a deal for a company out of Irvine, California in Atlanta. And we, it was a pretty big deal. We uh, auctioned off 300 houses. We sold 294 of those houses at that sale. We all worked good together and we said, you know what, we need to be doing more of this. And then the debacle hit. So we went after the Bear Stearns residential portfolio and got it. And we thought that it would be about three years worth of work and ended up being about seven. I ended up licensed in 33 states as a real estate broker and an auctioneer. I had an office in Atlanta, an office in Irvine, California, an office in Seattle, Washington. Spent a lot of time in Manhattan and Chicago and and Dallas and Miami and all the big cities. And um, but, you know, good auctioneers are always working themselves out of a job. 
So when we got that done, I was still young enough. I needed to have a career and be doing something. So I'm, you know, bought a piece of property and thought, well, I'll be an investor or something like that. And I bought a piece of property from a lady and she said, hey, you should open up a real estate brokerage in a small suburb town that you live in Jefferson, Georgia. And uh, we don't really have any competition. I looked around and I agreed with her and I said, well, I never thought of myself as a broker, but I'll do it if you'll help me. And she said, okay. And then the second thing she said was your marketing is horrific. And we need marketing and people need to know who we are and we need to get out there. You need to talk to my niece, which ended up being Tanya. Right. Oh, nice. and so, okay. you know, imagine I'm yeah, still cleaning definitely. up this big mess from yeah. seven years of flying around all over the place. And and I'm coming back, trying to shrink everything back down, trying to get home and trying to launch a brokerage at the same time. Carolyn told Tanya to call me. She was telling me to call Tanya. We didn't know who to call anybody. I was pretty much ignoring her. And then Tanya calls me and she's like, True. hey, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you or you're supposed to call me, but here we are. And I originally told her, look, I don't, I, I've had five others just like you. I don't need you. I'm, I'm stressed to the hilt. I don't have the, you know, and she's you like, oh, I'm totally different. And yes, you do. And I'm going to teach you these brand face principles and you're going to put your face out there and you're going to grow this brokerage. And we took a brokerage from Neil like literally nobody and Miss Carolyn, who was just sort of helping us a little bit to seven figures in about five years. We've been seven figures ever since growing every year, year That's over amazing. year. We double our numbers from last year. We double our numbers year before that, all using the principles from the brand face book that she wrote originally. So I've been a spokesperson for the company and for the power of personal branding ever since. I'm a true believer. That's amazing. So you guys have been working together for a long time. Yeah, we have. Yeah, right at uh, eight, eight years. years. Yeah. Wow, are you guys getting sick of each other yet? <laughs> oh no, uh, yeah, it, we're no. just getting started. We're just getting started. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, because you can you, sometimes you have those partnerships and those relationships. It can be a little like after a certain period of time. I mean, I know you, you get like that with your siblings or family. You spend too much time with them, you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Strangely enough, we've never argued never about work. Never. No, yeah. we have never. Um, I mean, we've disagreed at moments sure. about going a certain way or doing a certain thing, but very mild disagreements. And one of us would say, okay, well, that's fine. We'll do it. We'll do it this way this yeah. time and we'll see how it works. Right. Yeah. But it's just been so easy. Yeah. yeah. That's very healthy. Um, it really is. Yeah. The acumens are, they align yeah. so well. We just, it's, it's really part of the formula with us. Yeah. It's amazing what God, well, for me, you know, I believe in God, you know, what God puts and brings into your life to make things happen and just create miracles around you. So I absolutely believe that. the same thing. Absolutely. The exact same thing. So yeah. you said something very interesting and, and you said this too, and you know, to kind of, when it comes to personal branding, I feel like entrepreneurs or people in business, they have a, they are very hesitant to put their face on it. Do you find that to be true? Hmm. There are, there are, in fact, Tanya first taught me that, you know, there, there's really three people there. There's the uh, game face and a safe face and about face type of yeah. people that come into the program. And I was actually one of those people that um, it made sense to me. But, you know, when I, when, when she first started working with me, I wanted to shrink away from the crowds. Like I'd been in front of crowds. I'd, I'd sold in front of 10,000 people. Like uh, I was a part of the largest real estate transaction in one day in LA convention center. We sold $122 million worth of residential real estate in one day. We had 10,000 people and another 3,000 people in a satellite room trying to get wow. into the crowd to, to buy houses and stuff. So I, being in front of a crowd didn't bother me, but I thought, you know, I don't want to be the face of a business. I want, and she's like, oh yeah, you do. And uh, you know, because people need to know who you are and the acumens that have helped you get to here and your passion for helping people buy houses and turn them into homes. And they need to know you're, you're a nice guy and, you know, and you're fun to be around or whatever. They need to know the person behind the business. If you really want to exponentially grow, and she uh, she made me a winner out of it. I and and, I, and then I saw that and said, we got to take this to everybody else because this works. It's amazing. Cheers to the new years and to making resolutions you actually keep. Have you added self care to your routine? I know I have very much in self care. My man is yes, he is definitely keeping it tight. Our sponsors and Manscaped have the perfect tools to help keep you and your significant other clean and tidy this year. Manscaped tools for his jewels are so good. You'll want them for yourself. 
The Lawnmower 4.0 is all you'll need for his balls and your bikini line. You know what's up, ladies. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million people worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code LABELFREE20 for 20% off plus free shipping. Happy New Year's, you guys. Thank you for tuning in and we appreciate all your support. Go over to manscaped.com, use the code LABELFREE20 for 20% off and free shipping. And you see your mantra, mantra, people don't do business with a logo, they do business with a person. And I totally agree. People do business with people. At the end of the day, I don't care how much, you know, how technical we get or, you know, how much media, I mean, well, actually media is a big platform for us to really show who we are, to really connect with our audience, our you know, avatar, our, you know, person that we're, you know, we're marketing to. But really, at the end of the day, they're doing business with you. Mm-hmm. Every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like in, the, in this day and age, it's even more important for people to kind of get their personal branding down because there's so much media out there. There's so much noise. And once you really dial into that, that you really, it helps you stand apart from, from the crowd in a sense. Agree a thousand Shoot. percent. You don't even need us on this interview. You got yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the experts. You're the experts. It's awesome. Say. No, it's your, your so description true. is great. But you know what I love about coming on this podcast is because you talk about you know label free and. Uh, and you know you might look at what we do in personal branding as putting labels on things right this is like devise this you know create this kind of thing but we look at it totally different you know if you don't everybody has a brand no matter right. what you know you've got a brand so if you don't teach people how to treat you or tell people what you're valuable at they get to choose the label yeah mm-hmm. right Very and true. so and so what we want people to do is to see that we, we talk a lot about unveiling your inner star yeah. and we want people to look deep inside and say, okay, what things of value do you have to offer to your clients and what kind of clients, you know? So we, we look at five different questions that every great brand must answer. And we try to teach these everywhere we go, okay. but that the first one is what sets you apart. Second, who do you serve? Third, how do you serve them? Four, what qualifies you to serve them? And five, how does it make their life better? Ooh, and when I'm getting goosebumps. That, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and when you when you answer those questions and display that or show that, we like to say it's not enough to know the answers. You have to show yeah. in your brand. But when you pull all that together, you're creating what you want people to see and how you want people to treat you. And that's totally different than letting somebody else assign a label. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, that, yeah, that's awesome. And it's, that can become very powerful for you, not only in your business, but in your own personal life, you know, because really getting clear on your, your mission, your place in life and where you're, where you're headed, you know, that journey that you're on is, can, can be a very like exciting uh, dynamic thing. I'm looking for the right words. I was saying like a miraculous yeah. thing, but I mean that too. It could be miraculous. Depends oh, on sure. You with it. <laughs> Bet. Yeah, but no, you're dead on. It gives you, you know, we talk about that a lot because, uh, you know, finding your point of differentiation, right, which is the was the crux of of all of a, of a brand, right, and then building that brand around there that, that has everything to do with letting your customer knows who you are, how you are, why you are. Yeah. and why that's important to them. It helps also elevate your uh, business because number one, you've got to live up to that. Like if you tell people I'm a fast response, right? I'm the fastest, re- you better be, right? Don't yeah, let them, don't, don't be a slow responder if you're going to tell everybody you're a fast responder, right? And yeah. so you have to live up to those things and it, re- it removes, and it did this for me, it was amazing. It removes a lot of clutter from yeah. your life. And, and there's a lot of industries out there where, like you said, where you got a lot of noise, there's a lot of clutter to look at. There's always another shinier platform. There's always another great miraculous way to reach your clients. There's always a better CRM. There's always a bigger bear somewhere. Right. And so you got to, but, but you strip all of that away. If you've got a brand and you know where you're going tomorrow, you know what you're doing when you get up, just like any good business coach will teach you. Uh, And you've also elevated your craft whatever that is and you have to live up to it 
because your yeah. customers are going to expect it because you told them to expect it. Right. So. How important is authenticity? Hugely mm-hmm. important. And I think more so even for yourself than it is for other people, yeah. because mm-hmm. you need to like be comfortable with who you are. What's interesting is we, uh, as part of our process, we do brand messaging. And so that's kind of like writing the story, you know, the elevator pitch, the biography, things like that, so that you become comfortable with what you stand for, what is your story, how did you get there, and answering those five questions we talked about a moment ago. And when we do a brand messaging reveal, and we get people on a, on a Zoom call, and, and we show them their brand messaging for the first time, and kind of walk through it together, it's such an awesome experience. We've had grown men and women cry (laughs) on those brand messaging reveals very, very often. I'd say about 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. And I love what it does for them because when you read somebody their bio and they say, oh my gosh, is that me? Or, (laughs) or gosh, you know, I want to be that person's friend. I like that person. (laughs) And, and you can see that maybe for many of them, for the very first time, they get a chance to have somebody else look inside yeah. and see mm-hmm. what they might have missed. You know, it's like, yes, you did all this. Of course, you know, you are amazing, right? And, you know, one of the sayings that we have is it's hard to see the label when you're inside the jar. <laughs> and, and that's so true. And I think that's really what astonishes a lot of these people and how that authenticity, they didn't have to make anything up to be great. Right. I think that's really the lesson we learned from it. Yeah. yeah. And I even needed that. Like, I have to say, mm-hmm. like, I, like, I, you know, usually I tell people like the secret to my success is just listening to her. And, uh, and it, because it's, she, she did, she transformed it because I had already had some success in, t- in really two different careers uh, and, and was really blessed, but I had never really embarked upon the endeavor that I now, I know my true passion. Like I want to spend the rest of my life helping real estate agents and business uh, entrepreneurs grow to the success level that they want to get to. I just, I'm, I'm so passionate about it. I love it more than I, I never thought I'd love anything more than being an auctioneer. And I do, because I like to see people's growth in that. Yeah. But she taught me the very important part of that about, because I even remember thinking, you know, with my bio, I'm like, wow, like, like, you know, because I couldn't come in my life. Like, what are they going to care? Like how many transactions I've done? Like, she's like, that's who you are. That's where you been that's what you've done that's your experience level that you're in they care how you get there and why you do it yeah right i don't think they do and um yeah. i can say that now nothing suits me better than when people call you know look us up online and like you know nar tells us in the real estate space that you know 90 percent of everybody's looking you up before they ever even call you so when when i see a call report and call log in the end, uh, end of every day and I see somebody call in and say, I just looked you up online and I really feel like it, it would be great to do business with you. Or I trust you to help us find a home or so. Then we know our messaging is hitting people where they're supposed to. And it truly, the acumen is spreading out to, you know, the outside salespeople and our message is correct. And we get to, you know, help people buy houses every day, which is fantastic. So I love it. I love it. And I would, I would agree that um, with the bio part, I had a really, and I'm just to tell a personal story, and then we're going to have you plug your links and stuff. Um, when my late husband passed, like we had five businesses together, but it was all in the automotive space and it was all really his passion. And I told him for years, I'm like, oh, this is not my passion. I want to do what I want to do. You know, I want to get in fashion, you know, and after he passed away, like I had to really, like, it was a very hard time for me. It was, you know, I had to reinvent myself and start my life over and I was with this man for almost half my life. I met him very young. He was a little bit older, you know, like it was 17 years. I was 38, 39 when he passed. I'm 45 now. So it was a long time. Mm-hmm. And I had never learned how to write my own bio. He was really good at it for himself. He was a great self-promoter. I was not, you know, you know, I was, I'm a strong type A, but that was not my, my strong suit. So as I stepped out into the world on my own, not with this big, huge, successful man behind me. I had to really start like learning how to self promote and how I wanted to put myself out there in the world. What I wanted, what kind of story do I want to tell them? Why are they going to want to listen to me? Why do they want to talk to me? And at, over the last couple of years, I've learned to refine that over. And it took a lot of trial and error. You know, I can go back to a couple of years ago and look at those bios. I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> yikes, you know, and, um, 
I've learned that that is a very powerful tool, a par- very powerful piece of your success journey. And I know I, I'm not sure about you guys, but as a podcaster and reading so many bios and talking to so many people, I see where a lot of people are lacking in their bios and how they are presenting themselves. And I'm just like, God, you have so much more that you could say and put in here. Cause I use your bios when I, I release my app, when I release the episode, I take what you're telling me and I put it in there for the audience to hear, because I want, I'm using your words. You know, I'm going to say my piece about how great the, the, the episode was, but really your bio is your bio. I, that's right. not my story. It's yours. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Sure. Yep. So I, I've learned how valuable and important, and I'm sure my bio needs some help. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm, it's not perfect at all, but I learned how valuable, how, how much of a valuable piece of that is to what you're trying to do in any, any, any area of your life. Mm-hmm. It sure is. It's kind 100%. of serves as guardrails, you know? So stay in your lane, right? Because there are a million places we can go and a million squirrels and a million shiny objects, right? (laughs) But if we can stay in our lane to say, this is what I'm all about. This is who I'm helping. And just those two things alone will will make things so much more efficient for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So real quick, if somebody wants to work with you, what does that process look like? And then please let them know where they can find you. You got it. If you want to learn more about us and what we do, go to brandfacestarstar.com. And if you think, hey, you know what? This sounds great. I'm in. I just want to talk to somebody and find out exactly how do I do it. Then just go to discussyourbrand.com discussyourbrand.com because you can go ahead and just book a call, get on with our team, talk a little bit about exactly what it's going to take to get you to that awesome brand and present yourself the way you want. Awesome. And you guys are on all social media. Yes, yes. ma'am. Awesome. Yep. And your podcast, you and all the streaming channels. They're, they should be at brand face mm-hmm. star. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And podcast oh, guys- on, on all the streaming channels. And then I'm sorry, Dan, the, uh, the, uh, uh, social tags, uh, brand face star at brand face star for social, and then pretty much everywhere for, uh, the podcast. Perfect. And I will put all those links in the show notes, you guys. So if you are a business or if you are a person that just has that, you are a podcaster, like, like us, and you need a little bit of help with your tweaking your personal brand, do not hesitate to reach out to Tanya and Michael, and they will help you with that process and help give you that shining bio that you need and just your brand overall. And as I told you before we start recording, I like to ask my guests for any last words of wisdom or advice. So you each get to go. I think it's so important to leave the audience with something. It could be a business or it could be just a life tip, whatever you want to share. Okay. Um, Ladies first. I, uh, I grew up um, and I think it's important for people to know the reason brand face exists. I grew up in a family that was just riddled with alcoholism and addiction. Uh, fortunately, I was, by the grace of God, es- have escaped it. But my family, you know, was, it's just, it's everywhere. And so I grew up really, I didn't realize it at the time when I was really young, but I realize it, you know, now that brand face is what it is. Yeah. that the biggest difference or sometimes the only difference between a young person sitting on a stoop waiting for the next drug deal and one going off to college with a bright future is self-worth yeah. believing that there's something so unique and special about them to offer to the world and understanding what that is and how to present that that can change lives and so that's why brain face exists today that was amazing thank you for sharing that Michael? Mine's a little bit shorter, but uh, but more poignant in some ways. Be bolder. Uh, the one thing I would do different looking back, uh, you know, we all could look back and say we got a thousand different ways we could have made a different choice. Uh, I don't regret any of those because it got me to where I'm at right now, but I, I would have been bolder at everything that I did. So I just encourage everybody to be as bold, be bolder than you think you can be because you've got it in you. Be bold, be you, but you can't be me. That was one of my sayings with my I love it. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> all right you guys it's been an absolute pleasure having you as a guest like i love what you guys are doing what you're all about what what you represent so thank you for sharing your story and giving the audience some resources that they can use if they need help with that you guys this is your host deanna kempel with label free podcast to live your best life you must live label free please don't forget to subscribe like comment share follow all those good things and i'll be back soon with more dynamic guests